The heaviest rainfall in a century. In historic and unrelenting drought. A record-breaking heat wave. And New York City is now under its first ever flash flood emergency. Historic droughts, raging heat waves and deadly floods. If it seems like a new disaster is happening every day, that's because it is. According to the UN, in the past 50 years, we've seen an average of one extreme weather event a day. And the reason we're seeing more and more events like these? Well, it's because of us. One of the things to understand about extreme weather is we've always had it. Back in 1503, the meadows behind me were entirely underwater. So the fact that we see extreme weather events alone doesn't mean we're affecting global climate. But what we are able to see is that the frequency and the intensity, the magnitude of these extreme weather events are changing as a result, as a direct result of past emissions of greenhouse gases. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased by nearly 50%. As a result, global temperature has also risen by at least 1.1 degrees Celsius. One degree may not sound very much, but in the context of temperature fluctuations over the entire period since the last ice age, that's actually a pretty substantial warming. And what it is doing is loading the weather dice towards some kinds of extreme events and away from others. Any event that's associated with extreme heat, so some kinds of droughts, heat waves, wildfires, these are being made more likely by human influence on climate. As you might imagine, events associated with extreme cold are being made less likely. For example, here in Britain, we are less likely to see the kind of Dickensian winters that they like to put on Christmas cards. According to a report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, droughts that may have occurred only about once every 10 years or so now happen 70% more frequently, helping the conditions that promote wildfires become even more likely. But higher temperatures can also contribute to extreme rainfall, as you warm the atmosphere, you allow more extreme rainfall events to occur. And one of the things when you've got a big random system like the climate, if something can occur, eventually it does. The IPCC says heavy rainfall that used to occur once every 10 years now occurs 30% more frequently. And according to the UN's World Meteorological Association, over the past 50 years, extreme weather events have caused about $202 million in losses daily and killed 115 people every day. If we look back at the predictions made back in the 1960s and 1970s of the amount of warming we should expect by now, they were almost uncannily accurate. But what can we expect in 30 years' time? I mean, the weather in 2050 will be globally warmer than today. That's that, that's pretty much um, set in stone, I'm afraid. If emissions continue to increase, scientists estimate the world will hit two degrees of warming, possibly before 2050, and reach three degrees by the end of the century. At two degrees, extreme heat waves will be 14 times more likely to occur. Severe droughts will be more frequent, hurricanes are expected to grow stronger, and sea level rise is expected to make flooding events increasingly more common. It is possible that the world's climate still contains the capacity to surprise us, to do things that are well outside what our models can do. The further we stress the system, the more likely it's going to do something that we really don't expect at all. To avert a climate catastrophe, scientists say we must limit the increase of global average temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius by reducing greenhouse gas emissions to zero above pre-industrial levels. 1.5 degrees itself is not a cliff edge beyond which it's too late and there's nothing to be done and we're all doomed. Every half a degree of warming makes these extreme events more likely. Every half a degree of warming does more damage than the last, but it's not too late to stop this process.